Hello, good morning, everyone. How are you? Good morning. Pastor Lisa here. It is 6 a.m. Thursday morning. Rise and shine. This is the day the Lord's made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. We are glad about it. And so, um, hello, Veronica, Ronnie Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, Trustee Mildred Sass. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Who else is there? Is there anyone else that's there? I, we've got Sister Ronnie, Veronica Jackson. We've got Mildred Sass. Is there anybody else that's there that we can say good morning to? How are you? It's so good to see you. It's so good to be back. I miss you guys. Hello, Sora Barry. How are you? So good to be back. Uh, you guys really, really hold me to task. And so when I'm away uh, from this venue, I'm just all out of sorts for my day. Good morning, Stacy. How are you doing? No kickboxing this morning, Stacy. Are you going to your kickboxing class afterwards? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Trusty Sass. I love you as well. I love you as well. Thank you so very much. Uh, we are going to go through 40 days, 40 days of decrease, 40 days of decrease. And I met with my church last night. We had uh, an hour, a meditation moment where we discussed uh, what it means to go through the Lenten season. And so I'm grateful uh, for those that came out last night, and I'm grateful for those of you that uh, requested that I get back on board with this. And so um, thank you so much. Uh, is there anyone else that we're missing? So we've got three of you right now. There were four, I think, and um, but we want to make sure that we uh, adhere to your time, that we have some, you've probably carved out uh, a niche of time, and I want to be faithful to your time this morning. And so it was good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And so uh, for those that were not there, Sister uh, Sora Barry was not there, and Stacy was not there. Hello, Sister Doriel. God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I'm just going to go over very, very briefly uh, history, so many misconceptions about Lent, and then we're going to get into um, today, today's lesson, today's lesson. Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you that you are great, that you are Lord, that you are God. Beside you there is no other, and so we bless you. We don't need another. All we need, Lord God, is you. And so during these 40 days and even beyond we're asking that you be with us that you bless us not for our sake but for your sake that we might be the people that you call to do your will and to do your work these are such challenging times lord god and so uh, we ask uh, that you increase our understanding increase our knowledge increase our capacity to learn increase our capacity to do your will uh, Lord we bless you we love you and we thank you for every person that's on this Facebook live venue right now everyone that's going to be on we bless you and thank you for them in a mighty and wonderful way Lord this is our prayer today and we say amen in the name of your son Jesus we say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Good morning, Tabitha. God bless you. Thank you for sharing this video with other people. Again, we're not going to be too long for this morning. Uh, we want to just speak to you first about um, the idea of Lent. Many people um, think that Lent is something that is, uh, comes from the Bible, that it is uh, something that the Bible tells us to do. But uh, it is not, you're not going to find Lent anywhere in the Bible. You're not going to find anywhere where it tells us that we must fast for 40 days uh, prior to the resurrection of our Christ, uh, Savior, Jesus Christ. Lent was something that was instituted during the Council of Nicaea during, at 325. It was a council that was convened by the Roman Emperor um, Constantinople. And so, thank you so much, Stacy, for sharing. Hello, Beverly. And so, we're just talking about Lent. 
and uh, how Lent came about during the um, Council of Nicaea at uh, during 325 AD or AD 325 uh, in the year of our Lord 325 and so um, it is something that they came up with that would help the people uh, become more religious, more in tune to Christ. That was uh, the purpose that they said. And so um, many people uh, it, for this Lent uh, season, this Lenten season, for many churches, they've been practicing Lent for centuries. For other churches, it is something new. Uh, and so the question that I uh, had, good morning, Sister Laura uh, Timberlake, Sister T, good morning. The question that many of us have had, and me in particular, is um, should we do Lent? Should we celebrate Lent um, if it is not biblical? And uh, I propose that anything that helps us uh, or aids us in our walk with Christ is profitable. Profitable, not money profitable, but profitable to our souls, profitable to our spirits, profitable to us having a closer walk with God. And so the Lenten season, good morning, Glory, the Lenten season is something that helps us to understand who we are. Lent helps us face our realities. Lent is that desert period where we go without something, where we give up something so that we can come to grips with our weaknesses, where we can come to grips with our frailties so that we can understand that we've got to lean on the Lord and only the Lord. So many of us lean on ourselves. So many of us are independent. We live in the Western culture and in this Western culture. Good morning, cinnamon, cinnamons. <laughs> good morning. We lean on on the ourselves uh, because we are used to it. Uh, it causes a positive impact to your spiritual journey with God. Yes, it does. And so uh, what we want to do, some have started yesterday. If you've not started your Lenten journey yesterday, that's okay. It's never too late to start. We want to be relentless about Lent. Relentless about Lent. I didn't make that up. I got that from my good, good friend, uh, Reverend Rita Story, okay, who is relentless about Lent. And so that's what we want to do. When we look at uh, when we look at this whole idea of Lent, uh, according to the book that we're reading, and for those of you that don't have the book, it is called 40 Days of Decrease, a different kind of, uh, a different kind of fast, a different kind of hunger, and you can find it on the group page on Facebook. Uh, it is by Alicia Britt Cole. Amazon has the download right now for just 99 cents if you want to do the download. You can get it from Amazon. And so yesterday we had an introduction. Today uh, it deals with this whole idea of fasting from regret. Fasting from regret. So some people fast during Lent from food. Many people uh, fast. Uh, they take up the Daniel fast which is a fast that you can uh, find online. You can find so much information about the Daniel fast, which deals with um, uh, beans and vegetables, no meat at all, no sugar, no honey, none of that. Okay. Other people fast from television. Some people are fasting from social media. Uh, things that you need to let go of that you've been relying on so that you can be a better person. Now, not just a better person, person on your own, but to have a closer, we said last night, to have a closer relationship with the Lord. Because we believe that, that if you have a closer relationship with the Lord, then you will be a better person. That should be the, 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 the order. The order. We don't want to say, oh, I'm going to fast just so I can be a better person, just so I can be a good person, because there are good people that we meet all around us. You've met some really good people that probably did not know the Lord. They probably gave to charity. They probably had good attitudes. They probably were really kind people. But first and foremost, we want to have a relationship with the Lord. And once you have a real relationship with the Lord, then you you will be a better person. Amen. And so uh, we want to fast 
from uh, not just food or, or, or social media or, or telephone throughout the day. I remember um, Sister Doriel fasted or, or gave up the, uh, her telephone for one afternoon, okay? But we want to find out what is it that we've been holding on to that is holding us back. What's holding us back? And so... Uh, Today, today we fast from, or the, the person says, uh, Alicia Britt Cole, our author, talks about fasting from regrets. I love this. I love this. She says, regret empties anticipation, flattens dreams, and suffocates hope because regret is a form of self-punishment. Let's stop right there. It empties our anticipation. When we regret, many of us hold on to, oh, I regret that I did this. I regret that I said that. I regret that I went out with him or her. I regret having taken that job. I should have taken this other job. I regret getting into that relationship. All of these regrets or I should have done this. I should have done that. We hold on to the I should have's and we hold on to regret. We need to let go of regret. It flattens our our dreams when we hold on to saying what we should have done in the past. Instead, the author says we need to have hindsight. Hindsight and regret are two different things because regret flattens our dreams. It makes us hold on to the past and we wallow in it. We, we become immobile because we are, we are holding on to something that is gone. We, we are holding on to something instead of propelling forward. But hindsight is totally different. When we have hindsight, we can look back at those things that we should not have done, okay? And, and it helps us to learn from them. So instead of, instead of holding on to regret and languishing in the land of regret, languishing in the desert of regret and shoulda, should have done this, should have done that. I could have been this or I could have been that. Let it go and use hindsight. One of the things that separates successful people from people who are not as successful and you can define success however you want to define it is how we look at what we have done. People who are not as successful, again, you define success however you want, but people who are not moving forward, uh, who, who are languishing, uh, who, who, are, who, are, who are stagnant, oftentimes when they have hit a roadblock, they become immobile and they, 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 they stay stuck on whatever it is that they have done wrong whatever failure that they have had. But successful people, they look and use their hindsight and they say, I know I failed. I know I should have done something else, but I'm going to still move forward because I know that whatever it is I did wrong, whatever failures I had, whatever it was that, 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 that should have happened, that, that was my fault, I'm going to learn from it. So we want to let go of regrets. Let it go. Hashtag let it go. And so one of the things we want to make sure, one of the things we want to make sure is that we don't beat ourselves up. We, particularly sisters, okay, black people, black women in particular, we beat ourselves up. Because we have the whole world upon our shoulders. Let it go. Give it to God. Move on. That's right. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. And so for this Lenten journey, we want to make sure that we are moving on. We want to have a fresh a fresh understanding of what God has for us. We want to have a fresh revelation of what God has for us. We want to learn to lean on the Lord. We want to learn that we have to seek Him in everything. Seek what? First, the kingdom okay, of God, and all other things are going to be added unto us. And so during this Lenten season, we are seeking the kingdom of God. We are seeking God's will. And whatever it is, again, I'm not telling you, I'm not saying do the Daniel fast. If you are doing the Daniel fast, commit yourself to doing the Daniel fast. If you are going to fast, amen, I almost said social media, but that means that we won't be able to connect. But somebody might need to fast some social 
social media. Somebody might need to fast from TV shows or TV entirely. Somebody might need to fast from um, certain uh, certain personalities that 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 they that they encounter. People, certain people, fasting from people. Oh my goodness, toxic people. Somebody say toxic people. Fast from toxic people uh, you know when they when they enter into your space you've got to just say you know what I, I, I've, I've got an appointment I've got an engagement and you do you've got an appointment with the Lord it's time for you to go steal away meditate on your own when that toxic person comes around to your cubicle hello Larry when that toxic person calls you up when that toxic person comes into your sphere, worrying, yes, we need to be able to learn how to lovingly, how to lovingly let go of the toxic people in our lives. Another thing that holds us back is the fact that we are hanging around toxic people. We want to be able to soar with eagles during this Lenten season and beyond. I believe that God is going to give us a great and grand new understanding. And so, looking at looking at our book, okay, looking at our book, there's a reading, and I'm not going to give you an understand, my understanding of the reading. The reading is lovingly let go. That's right. The reading for today is John chapter 12, um, 12 through 19. You, John chapter 12, 12 through 19. Love for you to in your time to journal about what that means for you. Okay. For yesterday, yesterday's scripture was John chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. And one of the things that struck me was the woman, Mary, okay, we know the story, where she anointed Jesus' feet. She anointed him with oil. Uh, she uh, wiped uh, his feet with her hair. Uh, and the Bible says uh, in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 12, okay, uh, or 1 through 11, it lets us know that she she took the pure nard in verse 3. We're familiar with this scripture. She took the pure nard, which was an expensive perfume, and poured it on his feet. And it says the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Let's me know that when we pour out some things, when we sacrifice, this was a sacrifice because it was expensive. When she poured out this oil that could no longer be recovered, the house was filled with the fragrance. When you begin to sacrifice and pour out of yourself, when the Lord begins to work in you, there's going to be a fragrance that goes about that other people will be able to detect. Now, when I say fragrance, I don't necessarily mean an odor. I mean a, a, a shift in the atmosphere that people will be able to sense. Fragrance is something that you smell with one of your senses. And when you begin to change, when you begin to, to, to sacrifice on behalf of the Lord, when you when you commit yourself to, to a closer relationship with God, people cannot help but realize that something is going on. There's going to be a change in the atmosphere. And maybe not everybody will understand. Maybe not everybody is going to, 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 to realize what's happening with you. Some may not be able to discern because they are, they're not walking with the Lord and they might not have the gift of discernment. They don't understand. But you have to be strong. Somebody say strong and steadfast in in your journey. Some things are going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult to fast from food. It's going to be difficult to give up TV, the phone during certain times of the day. It's going to be difficult to fast from certain people who you've become used to. Some of us have become uh, uh, accustomed to toxic people. Some of us have gotten used to being around toxic people. Okay? Strong and steadfast. A, step, uh, a shift in your atmosphere. Another thing about this woman, this woman Mary, who we have come to know. Uh, remember, she and Martha were the sisters of Lazarus who was raised from the dead. And when you look at this scripture, John 12, verses 1 through 11, the Bible says that not only did Mary anoint Jesus, okay, with oil that could not be recovered, 
Now remember that it could not be recovered. When you step out and sacrifice, it's not going to be something that you can recover. It's it's one of those things where it's a it's a do or die situation. So when you're fasting, okay, when you when when you when you when you're giving up something, when you are praying to the Lord, when you are seeking his face and direction, you've got to say, "Lord, this is a do or die situation. I need to change this so that I can get with you, God. I need to let go of that." So I can get with you, God. I need to I need to break this situation in my life that I've become accustomed to so I can get with you, Lord. She broke, she broke the, 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 the perfume bottle so she can pour it on the Lord. But then down in verse 9, okay, it says that crowds of Jews were coming, found out where Jesus was. Uh, they came to see Jesus, but also, they came to see Lazarus, who Jesus had raised from the dead. And then verse 10 is the kicker. Verse 10 says, the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus, believing in him. Sisters and brothers, oh my goodness, that is the kicker scripture right there. It says the chief priests, those who were in high places, those who were so-called in charge. The Bible says they tried to kill Lazarus because why? People were coming not just to see Jesus, people were coming to see Lazarus as well. Why? Because God had done through Jesus Christ a great thing in the life of Lazarus. What? Gave him life, raised him from the dead. People had heard that Lazarus had been raised from the dead. And so, uh, that they wanted to see this great thing that had been done by God. And the Bible says that the people, the chief priests, tried to kill not only Jesus, but they wanted to kill Lazarus as well. You are on, my sisters and brothers, a battlefield right now. This Lenten journey or sojourn, sojourn is when you come to a place where you are present, okay? What we're doing is we are sojourning. We are, we are in a place, we are in the presence of God during these 40 days and beyond okay but but especially now we want to just lay out before him all of our habits all of our idiosyncrasies when you begin to be raised up when you begin to be in a place of resurrection uh that, where god is raising you up and doing a great new thing that the people will see that god has done something great and they might not always get happy for you they might not always get excited for you many of them are going to get downright angry and the bible says that the chief priest wanted to take Lazarus out because of what God had done in his life. Sisters and brothers, there are going to be people that will not be able to understand your walk. They won't be able to understand what God is doing in your life. They won't be able to understand uh, why you are going higher in the Lord and why they are still at ground level. But I come to let you know that if you continue on this walk, if you continue on this journey, if you continue to seek the face of the Lord, you are what? Unstoppable. Tell them to step aside. I have God on my side. I've got Jesus who's my co-laborer and I have a mission. You let people know that you are not turning around. No turning around is what our ancestors said in the spiritual. No turning back. No turning back. And so, they tried to kill Lazarus. There are going to be some people that, that, that have you as a target. But I want to encourage you, and our time is far past. I want to encourage you to continue on this journey. Get the book. Get the book. Uh, if you are not able to get it, still, let's meet. Let's try to meet at 6 o'clock. I want to try to make this commitment to you guys. Uh, I have a procedure this morning. I want you guys to pray for me later on. Uh, but prayerfully, I will be able to still meet you at 6 a.m. tomorrow where we can do day three of our 40 days of decrease, decreasing things in our life that, that have been trying to take us down so that we can increase, increase our relationship with the Lord so that we can be about his will and do what he has called us to do. No turning back, no turning back. If this has been a blessing to you, I pray that you uh, tell somebody, that you share it with somebody. Uh, we have now 
our our Facebook group page was the 21 Days of Freedom. Uh, it has now been renamed to uh, the Lenten Journey, uh, 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 40 Days of Decrease, so we can increase. Many of you are there. Thank you so much, Trustee Sass. Thank you so much. Many of you are already on the Facebook page. Invite someone else. No turning back. God bless you, Pastor Braxton. God bless you. Many of you are already on that page. Go to that page, join the page, okay, and make sure that you tell someone. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. You guys have been awesome. Tanya Plea, God bless you. Uh, Lawrence, we miss you. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Anyone else that I did not get a chance to say hello to in the beginning uh, before we close out? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Tracy. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I think I got you, Beverly. Good morning, though. I'm so thankful for your prayers, Beverly Warren. I'm so grateful for your prayers. Thank you so very much. Those of you that are on, um, I always tell you that if you have time, go or head on over to Pastor Challenger's page. Amen. Tabitha, yes, hello. Yes, please go to the Facebook group page and um, I always try to post some information during the day as well. Sandra Hopper Williams, God bless you. You are more than welcome. Listen, it's 626. I don't want to hold you. Many of you have to go to work. Many of you have to go to school. You have other obligations. And so I want to be mindful and respectful of your obligations. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and bless you for what you've done during this time that we have come together. Thank you, Lord God, for every person that's on this venue, Facebook Live, Lord God, every person that, uh, that took time out of their morning just so that we could grow closer to you. During this sojourn, Lord, we want to be in your presence. We want to hear your, your word. We want to seek your will, Lord God. Whatever it is that we are fasting from, uh, today we mentioned regret. So many times uh, we are holding on to regret. Allow us to let it go, Lord God. We don't want to wallow in regret. We don't want to live in regret. Regret holds us stagnant, Lord God. We want to, Lord God, learn from what it is that has occurred in our lives. So give us hindsight. Give us a new lens. Give us a new ability to see what has happened in our lives so that we can learn from it and move forward. Lord God, we believe that with you at, as the wind uh, at our backs, that there's no good thing that you will withhold from us. We thank you, Lord, that during this season of Lent, that we are seeking first the kingdom of God, realizing that all all other things are going to be added. Whatever it is that we need, Lord God, we know that you've never seen your seed begging for bread, your righteous forsaken, or your seed begging for bread. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the keeper of us. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the one that holds us in your right hand. Lord God, we bless you for so many things that you're doing, seen and unseen. And so as we leave this place to go on to our jobs, our schools, our businesses, whatever it is that we have in store for today. Lord, we ask that you continue not only to bless us, but keep those who are around us. Lord God, we don't want it to be all about us, but we want it to be about your kingdom. And so we thank you, we bless you, we give you the glory, and we say in the name of your son, Jesus, our savior and our friend, we say amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. A couple of you have just joined. Hello, Sister Renee. Thank you so much for coming out last night. Also, Sister Renee, we God bless you. Sister Kanisha, Kanisha Hall. I think that's my soror. God bless you. Um, I apologize for botching up names. Amen. But uh, I will see you guys, God willing, tomorrow at 6 a.m. Let's try to keep this up, sisters and brothers. And in the meantime, continue to be empowered and continue to remain unstoppable in Christ Jesus. Love you guys madly.